Good morning and welcome to Church of the Palms. We're so glad you found your way to us today. Church of the Palms, our mission is to love God and love neighbor, which Jesus said were the two greatest commandments. Our prayer is that these two commands guide everything that we do, our worship, our life together, and our service to the community near and far. This morning's service is our sanctuary worship service. Lyrics to the hymns will be on your screen, as well as scripture texts when the message has begun. You can also access our bulletin on churchofthepalms.org right on our home page. For those who enjoy worshiping in a more contemporary fashion, there is a contemporary service held on campus and streamed online at 10 a.m. Whichever way you'd like to worship, we hope you can share the opportunity with friends and family who might be searching for a church home. If you'd like more information about any of the announcements mentioned in today's service, feel free to give our office a call or visit us online. Our website is also a great way to learn more about our mission to love God and love neighbor and all about our small groups, classes, and community outreach efforts, some of which you can attend online. If you'd like to financially support Church of the Palms, there are several ways you can support our mission to love God and love neighbor. One of the easiest is online giving, the options of which you will find posted later in the service. We're so glad you chose to join us this morning. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Good morning. Good morning. Huh? Wow. <laughs> My name is Linda Getson, and welcome to Church of the Palms. Um, I serve our congregation as the clerk to the session, and also this year I'm the moderator for our presbytery, which is Peace River Presbytery. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship as we bow our heads for the prayer of invocation. Gracious God, our helper, we greet you this morning with joy and thanksgiving. We feel your welcome and anticipate your teaching. Show us this day what you would have us do. Whether it be great or small, we want to do what you command. Let our ears be attentive to your word and our hearts be responsive to the opportunities you grant us to bear one another's burdens. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let us praise God through our worship.
please stand for call to worship, printed in the bulletin on page three. The Ram of God has come near. Enter this time of worship with joyous expectation. We will extol you, O God, for you have promised us. Mercy us from the pit and restore us to the life of Sing praises to God, all faithful ones. Give thanks to God's holy name. We have known your favor, O God, in many ways. You have healed us and turned our mourning into dancing. Rejoice in the work you are given to do. Give thanks that your names are known to God. We will praise you, O God, and not be silent. We will give thanks to you forever. Let us worship God. Proof of God's amazing love is this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith, we can dare to approach God with confidence. Join me in our corporate prayer of confession. Gentle and gracious God, we know we have let you down in many ways. 
You have not lived up to your high intentions for us. You send us out as ambassadors of peace, and instead we pick fights with our sisters and brothers. You commission us to travel light, and we become bogged down with our possessions. You ask us to help ease the burdens others carry, but we add to them. You call us to join in your inclusive realm, but instead we create our ghettos. Patient God, will you forgive us again? In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. We are forgiven and can be at peace. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Join me as we affirm what we believe by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you. I'd like to invite the children forward as we take a few minutes to greet one another. good to see you and I owe Sydney big I already told her thank you for joining in we are having a big celebration this weekend do you know what we're celebrating hmm can you think of what your dress stand up for just a moment oh and wait come right up here come up here turn around I think it's pretty obvious what we're celebrating isn't it 
You look so beautiful in all the colors of the flag. You can have a seat again. So we're celebrating the 4th of July, the birthday of our country. And I was thinking about that this week, and I go, oh my goodness, about 250 years ago, some smart guys wrote their name with a very fancy pen on a very important document. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be cool if we could write our names with a very fancy pen and you would practice. So I'm going to give you this so you will be able to take that home and practice signing your name just in case you have to sign something important someday. All right, so there you go. Very fancy pen, very important. Sydney, you're not going to want to like leave everything. Here you go, my friend. You're welcome. So they, they wrote this thing, and you know what they were declaring? That we were independent, that we no longer belong to Great Britain. And I'm like, wow, that is really something. So we look at our country and we go, this is a great country to live in. We don't do everything right, just like as kids and as adults, we don't do everything right. But we're growing and we're learning. Heck, we're even friends with Great Britain now. Who would have thought that could happen? So I was thinking about birthdays, and I go, oh my gosh, I know how to celebrate a kid's birthday. Here you go, Sid. Will you take one of these? Because when you have a birthday, you have a birthday party, right? Cake and ice cream, presents and party favors. So you might want to put your feather and your little notebook in that. It's the start of your birthday favor. Because when we're in America, we have to celebrate this birthday. And one of the things we did when I was a kid we used to always go to parades, and we would wave our red, white, whoopsie, our red, white, and blue everywhere. Here you go, Sid. We would wave these. Can you wave that? Yes, because we're saying, happy birthday, America. This is really cool. There you go. And maybe you should have two, because there you go. One for each hand. How about that? I know, you're going to have to use your bag. So we would go to the parades, and we would wave these. And we're like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. But you know what was even more fun? When we were at, oh, you already got two. There you go. When we were at the parade, you had to hold open your bag. They used to throw candy. I don't know if they still throw candy when you go to parades, but they would throw candy. And I'm like, this America's great, right? So we'd get all our candy. You know what? Oh, your bag's not even open yet. Maybe Sydney will come down and help you. There we go. Then I was thinking, what else did we do? Oh, you know one of the best, I think, one of the best traditions of celebrating America are all those fireworks in the sky. That is so much fun. You know one of the silliest traditions I think we have? A hot dog eating contest. There is this guy named Joey Chestnut, and he has broken the record for how many hot dogs he can eat in 10 minutes. You know how many hot dogs? Any guess? 20, good guess. 76 hot dogs. Ooh, doesn't that just make your stomach hurt even thinking about it? Okay, I digress. One of my very, very favorite things as a kid, not only the fireworks in the sky, but we used to have our own sparklers, and we got, our parents would light them, and we would get to write our name in the sky, and we got to do our very own piece. So I'm gonna give you a little sparkler for your other hand. And here's what I want you to remember, that God wants us to sparkle the way these sparklers do in the dark, dark night. Sometimes people are sad and sometimes they're hurt and they need a little sparkle of light. And you know how we do that? By being loving, by being kind, by sharing our stuff. And so when you go to celebrate the birthday of America and you see those fireworks in the sky and then you have your very own sparkler, just remember that you get to be a light of God's love out in the world. Will you pray with me? We thank you, God, for children. We thank you for this country. We thank you for filling us up with a love that helps us just to sparkle out with light. Be with us on this day and every day. Amen. And I know you get to go back and sit with your parents, so you get to have communion with us today. So find your way back. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm exhausted. Okay, but I only have just a couple of announcements today. Do you notice anything new? Pretty cool, right? So for a couple of years, we have been working on getting furniture built for the sanctuary. I think it was during COVID that we actually redesigned the whole chancel space. And I don't know if you would know this, but our old furniture that we had for communion and the pulpit was beautiful, right? But it was so heavy. It was solid marble. So we were really worried about our guys getting hurt every time they would try to move it so we could do some flexible things up here. So we got a local craftsman who, we, who designed this, made this for us. You'll notice on the pulpit, the traquetra, which is a symbol for the Trinity. And we have one piece still to come, of course, the baptismal font. But we just love it. We hope that it serves us well for years and years. And of course, it was because of a very, very generous donation from someone in our congregation who um, allowed us to be able to do this, this beautiful furniture. The only other announcement that I have, oh, Mingy threw in another announcement that she is doing a new member class on Tuesday at 5 o'clock. For anyone who is interested in joining Church of the Palms, reach out to Pastor Mingy for those details. And, of course, just day of hope. Thank you for responding. I think we have enough volunteers. What is the big thing now is July 10th, where we will do all of our training. We start in here at 1.30 for ambassadors and for greeters. And then we all move over to the Palm Center at 3 o'clock to stuff those backpacks and for all the other training. And then we'll have our ice cream social. I think that's the big thing, except really, really a great big thank you for all of you who raised your hand and said yes, for the dentists who ended up coming through, for the hair barbers that ended up coming through. God is good. God answers prayers, and we are going to have a great day serving our children. Let us continue our worship. So just to continue one little piece of Pastor Lori's announcement, the old communion table is right there. As you come into the sanctuary, it is welcoming you. Now it serves as our welcome table down there. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 tells us, some give freely, yet grow all the richer. Let us give back to God with gratitude for all we receive from God, particularly for our freedom and liberty. Please look at page eight of the bulletin on ways to give. Now let us have our moment of gratitude.
pray. With gratitude for your gracious favor, we dedicate these gifts, O oh Lord. May they help others as we have been helped. May they reach out in a spirit of gentleness to restore to community those who are alienated. May they announce to the world that God is present here among us. With these resources, may your light and peace be evident here and all over the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Our scripture lesson for today is the gospel according to Luke chapter, one, chapter 10, verses 1 to 9 and 17. Luke 10, 1 to 9 and 17. Let us hear God's word to us. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. While I was in a seminary in Calcutta, India, I met a young woman missionary who was only a few years older than me. While she was a seminary student, she said, she repeatedly prayed to God saying, Lord, send me as a missionary to anywhere in the world, but please make sure it is to Thailand. I thought so too. Amazingly, quite contrary to my experience of God's sense of humor, that is exactly where God sent her. Jesus sending 70 of his followers um, to the villages and towns in Galilee reminds me of Genesis chapter 12, verse one, where God sent Abraham saying, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Exodus chapter three, verse 10, when God sent Moses saying, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelite, out of Egypt. Joshua chapter one, verse two, when God sent Joshua saying, now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people into the land that I'm giving to them. Our God is a calling and sending God. In Jesus, God calls us to love and serve all people. God sends us to deliver the word to those who have not heard it yet. This weekend worship has three contexts or components of our thinking about being sent. The first context is that this is the 4th of July weekend. Pastor Lori preached a beautiful sermon on that to the children and us. We remember those who gave their lives so we can live in freedom today. 
independence is living in a country where there is freedom and peace for everyone, including freedom of speech. How is God calling us to live as a people who live in freedom today? In freedom, we are called to live in peace, keeping one another safe instead of terrorizing or killing. In freedom, we are called to listen to each other and hold each other up, regardless of background, race, religion, or orientation. In freedom, we are called to be proud of our unity in our diversity. In freedom, we are called to choose to love God and worship God openly. In freedom, we are to love God and to love one another. And in freedom, we are called to find and maintain ways of peace, justice, and harmony. Our second context of worship for this weekend is that this is a Communion Sunday. On Communion Sundays, we celebrate the Holy Feast here that is on the Lord's table. We remember Jesus who is sent by God to be our salvation, to pay on everyone's behalf for all our sin, and to buy our redemption and our freedom. In communion, we remember that we are all sinners, and God's forgiveness and God's love is what we need every day. That in Jesus, our souls are set free from the sin and evil that surrounds us. In our third context, Jesus sent 70 of his followers into the villages and towns of Galilee to prepare for his upcoming visit. The New Testament scholar Elaine Heath reminds us that Jesus has given the 70 followers the same authority for healing and teaching power that Jesus had. They were also to say to the people, peace to this house, and the kingdom has come near to you. As I study this passage and our being sent by God, I found myself asking to whom are we being sent, to where, to do what and how. We're not the 70 followers of Jesus long ago. We live in different times and in a significantly different society. But our task is all the same as that of the 70 followers of Jesus long ago. We are sent by God to prepare Jesus' way among all people, to share the good news of God's love and grace, forgiveness and acceptance. We are sent to make people aware of God's redeeming presence in our human life, to be open to receiving hospitality, eating the food set before us, and praying for the sick, and to announce that the kingdom of God has come near to them. Eating the food set before us in hospitality is not always as easy as it may seem. For the first 10 years of our marriage, my husband Will was sent to 51 countries and 160 plus mission partners around the world. Will would come home telling me stories on how he ate strange foods put before him in hospitality. Some of the memorable foods that he ate includes an anteater's stout in the Congo, zebra meat in Zimbabwe, a whole duck head with a chopstick in Thailand, pork belly stew in China. Hmm, I wish it was me. I would have loved it. He did it. And fermented yak butter fudge in Tibet. And glasses of straight sugar cane juice in India. No wonder he became a diabetic. <laughs> All Christian missions begin with God's love for us in Jesus. They continue with Jesus sending us to share the good news with others. 
It is about Jesus and about people coming to love him and follow him. We read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. Our role will always be to prepare, support, and invite people for the coming of Jesus Christ. We are the advanced team, not the star attraction. We are sent to relate to others with mutual hospitality, grateful presence, and respectful open conversations. God value us all equally. We are all precious and beloved in the sight of God. We're not to serve to our own advantage or self-interest. The people have a right to accept or decline our offer or mission. It is not always easy to understand what our mission is or what God has sent us to do. Back in the 1970s, a community of Christians sent a mission team, including our friend Bob Alter, to a remote village in the mountains of northern India. They asked the villagers what it is that they needed most, many of them being teachers. The mission team assumed the village needed a school for the children. The villagers said, we need water. The mission team did not hear them and offered to work on a health clinic. Again, the villagers said, we need water. Finally, the mission team understood. They helped the villagers put in a pipeline from a spring and build a reservoir for the whole village. The villagers were very happy. They got the clean water they most needed. Eventually, they came to trust the mission team, and a school and a health clinic were also built. Finally, the villagers asked the mission team, why are you helping us? Now we're talking about a stretch of some years. And then the mission team finally got to say, we are Christians sent by Jesus Christ. So began the teaching of the good news of the gospel in word, as well as in deed continues. Over the decades in Presbyterian Church, our overseas missionaries discovered evangelism or sharing the word of God includes providing education, medical care, economic development, and access to food and clean water. They discover that they are sent to serve the whole person. Through the gifts of generosity and involvement, Church of the Palms is a part of these missions here around the, and around the world. We have discerned that God has sent us to love God and to love neighbor. The 70 followers knew little about the people to whom Jesus sent them. Similarly, we know little about the neighbor we serve locally and nationally and globally. Yet we love them all the same as Jesus loves them. Thanks be to God who considers us worthy of being sent. Amen.
the scripture tells us that people will come from the east and the west and the north and the south to come and feast at the Lord's table. Here we have come to this Lord's table. This is not a Presbyterian table or Church of the Palms table. It is the Lord's table. We are the Lord's beloved invited guests to feast with him here at the table. And in the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread. After giving thanks to God, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you all for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink of it, remember me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And friends, he will come again. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of the universe, ruler of all nations, you have placed us, your people, in this land made rich with rivers, forests, mountains, oceans, and creatures great and small. Here you set before the founders and pioneers of this nation an opportunity beyond measure to build a realm of justice, peace, and freedom for all people. At this table, you invite us all who are freed from the law and baptized into Christ Jesus to be a sign of your reign in all the world, a sign of love marked by kindness, care, and compassion for all those who are hurting, suffering, or grieving. May they sense your presence, O God, and feel your love through us, your servants. Gracious and loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup, that through them we might be united with you in love and care for one another. May your Spirit empower the life we share and ignite our witness as we are sent into the world. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus took bread.
Jesus took the cup. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now, as we have been nourished and strengthened, send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may use our gifts to bring peace, justice, and love to our brothers and sisters here and around the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Now go in peace. Know that you are sent by our great God and King to love God and to love neighbor. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you now and always. Amen.